today we're going to walk through a great feature for building simple, elegant views to easily summarize data for executive management or process owners, packing a lot of powerful information into a quick and easy to read format. What you're looking at right now is an incident backlog trend represented as a scorecard. As you can see, the scorecard quickly shows the important information in, a, in an easy way. Let's walk through the components of what we can see so we can understand the scorecard, and then we'll walk through some examples building them. Right now, this is measuring the backlog of open incidents. We can see that there's currently 17 open incidents in the backlog. That's what we call the main indicator. I can see that this value is lower than previous values using the up-down indicator, which is this green arrow. And I can see that that represents a 22.73% reduction from previous values. Again, uh, that's the secondary indicator. I can also see a glimpse of the overall trend uh, that's behind this, so the, the trend of the backlog over time. We call that the spark line. If I want to see it in more de detail, I can click on the spark line, and it's going to take me to the trend that sits behind this data. So you can see that this is a timeline view. Uh, of that backlog value over time. So there's two different ways that we can create uh, these kind of scorecard views. So we're going to walk through both of them and, and see how that works. So one way of, to create an indicator is from an existing timeline trend. So if I click on change, uh, I'm going to find one that I have called trend of high risk changes. So this is a view that I've already created, a standard timeline view that's looking at any change that's very high or high risk grouped by the start date over time. So I can see week to week how many high risk changes have we had. But rather than looking at this as a timeline, I'm going to represent this to my management as a scorecard the way we saw before. And it's very simple and easy to do. I click on File, and then I click on Create a Scorecard View. So it's going to prompt me to name this uh, uh, scorecard. So I'm going to just call this High Risk Changes Scorecard and click OK. So you'll see that it automatically created all the components that we saw before. We saw the title and subtitle. Uh, we saw the main indicator is two high risk changes, which is a 100% increase. Uh, and we see the trend line that we saw in that timeline before. So this is a key indicator and it lets me know how many high-risk changes are being performed every week. Now one thing you might notice is that this increase is right now being shown as a, a green indicator upward. So there's a few things that we might want to tweak around this. Now if I click the edit scorecard items it opens up this scorecard items menu on the left hand side which allows me to play with or configure these. So the first thing is I'm going to change the way that this represents so that it shows that an increase in high risk changes is not good. So I'm going to click on up down which is the up down indicator for that arrow and I say the value is an improvement when it's negative. We want to decrease the number of high risk changes so a negative va uh, value is an improvement. If I wanted to, I could change the coloring, uh, or I can change whether it's an arrow or a triangle. So for the moment, I'll show it as a triangle. I could also change where it's uh, where we see it uh, in the indicator. But right now, I'm just going to click Finish. So now you can see that this rise is bad, uh, and you know that's very easy to see. I can do the same thing for the secondary indicator by clicking next to the secondary indicator at Edit clicking the same negative. If I wanted to, I could show you know, different indicators there, but I'll leave that. Um, in the position, I could say, you know, we can put that, say, to the left of the main indicator. Uh, and as we saw before, change the coloring. So when I click Finish, now you'll see that those have swapped places. So it's 100% increase, which brings us up to 2. And I still have that trend line. So you can see that I can change the title, I can change the subtitle, I can change the main indicator, uh, etc. It's, it's very easy to do from here. Um, and there's a number of you know, things that you could look up in our documentation, but uh, for right now, we're just going to make one more change, which is I'm going to click on the spark line and click Edit. And where it says Position, I'm going to put it to the right. So you can see what it looks like as a little bit more of a, a horizontal view, where you know I have the secondary indicator, the main indicator, and then the spark line kind of all in a row. So you can see that with a few simple tweaks, we can show this in a few different ways. 
Now that I have this exactly the way I want it, I'm going to publish this so that my change team can follow this. So what I'm going to do is click File and click Publish. Now I'm going to create this as a live view and in addition to having it be published, I'm actually going to publish it to ServiceNow which is where we're doing these changes. Uh, so I select my ServiceNow data source and I populate that I want a live view. Uh, I'm actually just going to call this high risk changes. Um, and when I click next we have here the, um, the ability to size it. I'm going to put this at 175 pixels for reasons that I, you'll see in a moment. And on the options, I can hide any of these elements. So for instance, I could hide titles, I could hide subtitles. One thing that I'm going to make sure is checked is scorecard drawdown, display in a new tab. Again, I'll show why that's important in a moment. Uh, but as soon as I click finish, it's going to give me a link that I could send out to anyone for this view. There's an embed code if I wanted to put it in a portal. But for right now, I'm going to switch over to the tab where I have my ServiceNow change management dashboard open. I'm going to click this plus sign that gives us add content and select explore analytics and then I'm going to find my high risk change trends uh, scorecard. So this is the high risk changes scorecard that we just created and I'll say where I want it on the dashboard. And now you'll see I have this high risk changes uh, scorecard. The reason that we sized it the way that we did is so that it fits comfortably on the dashboard. And then if I click to drill down it pops open in a new tab so that we don't have to squeeze this trend view in that you know small space and then I could drill through to view details I have all of the you know typical controls of a timeline view here as well uh, that I have for that de uh, detailed data so we've now looked at going from a, a, a timeline view and being able to generate a scorecard the other way of being able to generate a scorecard is actually generating it from a pivot so the reason for this is if you wanted to either have some you know, uh, uh, more live data or something that requires a calculation um, where you know, we, we're not starting from a timeline view that's already trended based on date time, but we kind of want to create that, that scorecard from a, a pivot. So I'm going to open up this service disruptions and impact pivot to show you what I mean. So you'll see this is uh, using the outages. It's showing me per business service how many outages, what the average time of each outage, what the cost of the business is, the percent uptime, and the mean time between failures. So what that allows me to do is very easily see a number of different indicators. Now let's say I've created this as a live view and I have here this column for uptime and I say you know what I want to turn this overall uptime into a scorecard that I can, I can track over time. So I'm just going to click on this cell and say create a scorecard view from cell. And I could do this for anyone. So I could do it just on the email business service cost of business or on the e-commerce mean time between failure. Any cell that you see in this pivot I could uh, do that uh, scorecard against. But I'm just going to do it against percent uptime right now. Create a scorecard view from this cell. So uptime availability scorecard and you'll see that it's going to automatically create this scorecard. Now one of the things you'll notice is that it doesn't have some of the elements that we saw before in the one that we created from the timeline. We don't see the up-down trend and we don't see the spark line. The reason is because we created this from a pivot we have one score but we don't have a trend of those scores. Don't worry we can get that very easily if we want to. If I want to trend again that pivot was a live report but if I want to trend that historically all I have to do is click Add Trend, this button right here. It's going to prompt me to create a table that we're going to save that to, and then a schedule. So if I say daily at midnight, you know, in GMT, we're going to snapshot that. That means we're going to look at this uh, uptime availability on a daily basis, and we're going to be able to, to then trend that over time. So it's now successfully scheduled. It asks if it wants me to connect the trend job to the indicator, and the answer is yes. And so now it's going to run, and you'll see we have some of that information of before. We have a spark line, we have a percent change that's all available here. Now as this trends over time, we'll start to see the arrow and we'll start to see you know, the trend line get a little bit more interesting. Right now we only have one score. If you want, you can load historical data into this using the upload uh, data function. But what's key is that it was very easy to 
create a calculated metric, the 99.67% availability, and then trend that over time. Thank you for taking the time to walk through this video.